because you've been involved uh, clearly in recruitment and retention yep. in, 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 across everything, and you work with managers and head of divisions, um, can you can you talk to how important it is to make sure that f- you know the marketing of recruitment, yep. the machine of marketing to mm-hmm. attract candidates, when you're attracting candidates, when you're bringing people through that recruitment funnel, there's a synergy in, uh, right. between that and between what it's like to when they are finally working. Yep. Well, as opposed to selling them dreams and when they correct. come in, they're working with managers who don't inspire them and managers who are maybe not as progressive if you're saying the p- p- place is progressive or if you're saying uh, we have diversity, they come in into a conservative manager that still maybe runs jokes for uh, you know old-fashioned jokes that uh, discriminate right. and stuff like that. Yeah. And you do hear and see it all in our job. Nothing surprises you, um, unfortunately. You do mm-hmm. you do hear stories, mm-hmm. um, but you're right. It's it's the start to finish process with the current market the way that it is. Again, I'll go back to tech because that's where I work at the moment. Joe, if you're a business analyst out in the market at the moment anywhere in Australia, the likelihood that there's three or four different companies tapping you on the shoulder right now is just fact. Yeah. So. If you do not value the employee from that initial contact all the way through, you're going to lose them because there's multiple options, right? If you get a sense of one red flag in this day and age, drop it and you go with someone else that's not giving you those red flags. The other part is, Joe, you go through a recruitment process, you Joe, have your great documents, you have your easy sign through My Recruitment Plus, it's all great. And then they start and then onboarding's terrible. They kind of turn up their first day, none of their team turn up, there's no one at yeah. their desks. You know, yeah. You've sold this story and now it's not there. Um, or yep. long term, they come in, the job's not what you sold them in, in the interview as well. That's one of the big things that we follow up on, yep. making sure that when they are recruited, that the job is what was sold to them in the process as okay. well. Because all jobs are, all jobs are different. Jay, again, we'll go back to being a BA, so business in, analyst in, in every... So in saying that, what's the, what's the solution? Is it just to make sure the recruitment team and the recruitment marketing team is honest? Okay. Or is it, for example, bring in a team or or the... The, the team leadership or people from the team that where that person is going to be working at into the interview to tell them the truth so they Correct. can get a really good understanding of the people they'll be working with and the job yeah or, or both maybe so what are the, the, the tricks that you can do to make sure um, there isn't a chasm between what the story that the recruiters are telling and yeah. what's the reality of the job when they work there well, and everyone's got a different style. My style has always been, at least a first interview should always be a HR person as well, there for the cultural viewpoint and just you know, describing the, the company and making sure everything goes smoothly through the process. Mm-hmm. But the actual person in there asking the question should be the technical expert from that area that they'll be working with or yeah. reporting into. Um, and then, of yeah. course, second interviews are you know, one-up managers or anything of the sort. So they actually know not only what the team they'll be working with, but what their team's boss is like okay, as well. Let's, let's, that also dictates the culture as well. Let,